Ito ang Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang naiba at kakaibang plataforma sa digital broadcast. Mula Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao hanggang sa iba't ibang dako ng mundo. Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang sandiga ng sambayanan mula sa walang labis at walang kulang na pagbabalita, paglilingkod, maglalahad ng mga mapagbuong komentaryo at usaping pambayan para sa kapakanan ng karamihan. Broad Streamcast Communicators, tuwirang maglilingkod ngayon hanggang sa susunod na henerasyon. online, chikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Ating tunghayan, pakinggan at tuklasin ang mga pangyayari at kaganapan sa mundo ng online. Buhay online, chikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Alamin ang pinakalates trends mula sa trabaho at kung hanggang sa anak ang narating ng teknolohiyang ito. At ngayon, narito na ang ating host, ang ating Teki Mami, si J. C. Bautista. Hello, happy Monday everyone. Welcome to Buhay Online and this uh, last week of November, what, to last few days of November. It's November 28th uh, here in sunny Pampanga, broadcasting uh, to you guys from Sunny Pampanga, it's 31 degrees. Medyo umiinit po yung panahon. Pero, I don't know, so weird because sometimes it's still cloudy, you know? And um, um, it's the beginning of the week, di ba po? The new, uh, a new and a promising week for everyone. I trust na kayo po ay naging uh, masaya po ang weekend nyo, restful for everyone. Some of you na nakapagpahinga. Uh, from work and siyempre po, tuloy-tuloy po ang traveling everywhere. I have friends coming, Paligbayan friends here from America, from everywhere, who's from Europe. Tuloy-tuloy. As tuloy-tuloy ang mga pagbiyahe ng mga tao because talaga naman parang almost normal na ang ating mga traveling and everything else, right? So yeah, how did you spend your weekend? Kayo po ba yung nag-drive rin? Or nag-trabaho? Kung gaya ko, wala na lang. Masyadong different ang weekend. But, but of course, because po, yun po yung pinag-usapan natin before. Uh, yeah, I had some uh, email and text asking about uh, freelance work and working from home and and businesses na gagawin din this pandemic. Well, di ba po, uh, we, we had that series on that uh, earlier this year. And, oh, and totoo po, talaga naman po, nowadays marami pong freelancers talaga. Uh, because well, when when people were asked to return to work, some people did not return to work because because of this pandemic situation, marami pong nakapag-umpisa ng sarili na ng negosyo, marami pong nag-freelance, especially for those jobs that are related to technology and being on the internet and uh, working with, with things that uh, in, uh, involve the internet. You're a present company included. Ako na rin po, nagkasali uh, dyan. Uh, talaga po naman, uh, of course, uh, I thank the Lord so much for all the blessings and the provision, but I actually have more work now than before the pandemic. Yun na nga po, of course, this, has, this past year, I've seen a lot of, of issues, a lot of uh, things that happen in people's lives. No? Uh, but uh, because of technology, because of the tulong ng technology, we are able to be resilient, we are able to survive in this pandemic situation. So moving forward to now, which is actually we're nearing the end of the year, di ba po? parang ganun na lang magdaan yung 2022, faster than 2020 and 2021, has ever been, it feels like. Na parang, it just tipped right through talaga itong taon na to. Parang anong nangyari? Parang saka Chinese New Year pa lang na uh, na pag-diat ng 2022. Tapos na naman ulit. 
Ayun na nga, ito yung mga Thanksgiving na, no? Happy Thanksgiving to all, especially in America, my friends. Thanksgiving po ng Thursday. Uh, but of course, every day should be a day of Thanksgiving, right? Every day that we wake up to no, to a new day is something to be thankful for. Kaya talaga, actually po, sa puso natin lahat, every day is Thanksgiving, di ba? But anyway, so, let's see what uh, things we have on our plate today. Well, andyan pa rin po kasi yung hindi natin nasarahan yung mga tungkol sa internet addictions because they wanted to tackle it one by one. Now, we will devote just a whole segment of that again to address yung iba't ibang mga uh, internet addictions na nagsisegue and nag-include yung mga cyber crimes, di ba? So, <clears throat> just to have a recap of uh, the internet addictions that we that we uh, tackled, okay? Uh, doon sa mga nakaantabay pa regarding that, we will, ha- we will tackle each and every addiction and the concerns at saka kung ano yung mga cure or things that are being done at saka kasi nga related din ba sa cyber crimes. Well, okay, nipasa natin na that is, uh, you know, what kinds of, <clears throat> the, the types of internet addiction we mentioned was, yun na nga, cyber sex addiction, uh, self-explanatory po yan, yung net compulsion, yung pag, pag, pag uh, the surf sa net, perennially and forever, right? Uh, <clears throat> cyber relationship addiction, yun po yung mga kasama dyan yung catfishing at saka romance scams, compulsive information seeking, kasi nga yun, yun but kasama na rin yung pagre-research and all those things uh, na palagi nakaputok sa internet para mag, magbasa na magbasa at magharap na information. Yung net compulsion naman yun, yun pala is yung na uh, that compulsions concern interactive activities online that can be extremely harmful. Yun po yung online gambling, trading stocks, online auctions, yung mga eBay, saka compulsive online shopping. Ayan ang net compulsion pa na. Yan, hindi yan, um, hindi yan um, um, information seeking iba yun. So yung compulsive information seeking, ayan yung palagi naghahanap ng data saka na data knowledge. Opportunity to find information kasi it's so easy on the, on the net. Ayan po yun na buong araw ka na lang research ng research ng research, right? At saka yan, yung computer or gaming addiction, okay? So we will tackle those things one by one, uh, siguro maybe tomorrow and or in the next coming days. Kasi gusto ko po mag ng mga specialists or yung mga uh, avowed uh, uh, addicts or ano na merong avowed addiction to, to shed some light, di ba, on this matter, okay? Uh, yun na nga, so, yun, ang palagi yun, ha, to, that what you have to watch out for are the signs and symptoms na kayo po ay addicted na to the internet, no? Tanungin niyo sa sarili niyo, ask yourselves, how often do you find that you stay online longer than you intended, right? How often do others in your life complain to you about the amount of time you spend online? How often do you find yourself anticipating when you will go online again, yun po, okay? Uh, pwede niya itong sagutin with one of these responses. Not applicable to me. Rarely, occasionally, frequently, as often, and always. Yun po. Pag always ang sagot niya dyan, yun na. Most likely, you are addicted to the net. Each answer has a numerical value assigned to it. At the end of the, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it is, uh, is to, is it, it's to answer yourself honestly. Diba? Can you stand not looking at the internet? Can you stand not checking your cell phones? Okay? Yun lang po eh. Okay? Other internet addictions have also, uh, uh, you know, have all, have also some concerns, you know? Um, there are eight characteristics that describe having an internet use disorder. Okay? Uh, the characteristics are, ito po, banggitin natin, no, bago ang lahat. If somebody is preoccupied with the internet, thinks about previous online activity, or ina-anticipate na yung next time niyang mag-net, most likely, you have an addiction, right? 
if you need to use the internet with increasing amounts of time in order to achieve satisfaction. If you have made unsuccessful efforts to control, to cut back, or stop your internet use. Kung tinrya niyo ng mag-detox from that, pero walang nangyari. Okay? If you have stayed online longer than you originally intended. Kasi sometimes, sabi mo, hindi, one hour lang ako mag-ano, mag-surf ng net para gumawa ng paraan na ano, para maghanap ng, ng ways and means to solve this problem or to make this certain thing. Biglang you end up staying there the whole day. But of course, it's a different case altogether when you have to, when your work and your life depends on the internet because it's your job, just like me. But you know, sometimes I, you know, I, I don't make excuses for my being on the net because I, I have the excuse. I have my reasons why I'm on the net. But of course, in between that, because I'm a freelancer and because my time is my own and I determine the amount of work that I can handle depending on how much work I could handle, dun po, nag, dun po nagkakatalo yun sa kung paano mo i-control yung urge mo to stay online all day long. Pero yan talaga, you know, my, my partner and my my hubby dude can attest to that na nauna yan siya sa akin matulog, nauna yan... Uh, Uh, gumising ng ilang minutes pero nauuna siyang umakit kasi nagsatrabaho pa ako pero yun na nga ano din yan, sasabihin niyan hindi ka na nag-work, nanonood ka lang ng Netflix or naglalaro ng, ng games well, I'm guilty of that. that and that is why yun nga, dapat po alam nyo kung kailan na kayo titigil na mag-internet or, or to be online because that's when it becomes an addiction when you are relentless no na hindi na kayo makastop okay so pagka kunyari uh, you are restless moody depressed or irritable pag, when you're attempting to cut down or stopping your internet use yun yun addiction yun parang ano yun eh pag pag sa alcohol sa kasta sigarilyo pag naiinis ka kasi hindi ka makasigarilyo or makainom o na, na nagiging moody ka at irritable kasi nga addicted ka na to the substance, right? And in this case, it's the internet, alright? Uh, kung, kung it gets to a point where it has jeopardized or risked the, lo- the loss of a significant relationship, a job, or for example, or your studies or career opportunity, pag yun po, nakakapa, nakakabala na doon, obviously, it's not good anymore for you okay if if for example sometimes you have to even lie to family members your therapist or others to conceal the extent of involvement with the internet but kailangan ka na magsanangaling because of it and that well characteristic man masama na okay and if you use the internet as a way of escaping from problems of relieving a, a mood kunyari feelings of helpless helplessness guilt anxiety depression When you can, when you when you have become so reliant and dependent on it, that's an addiction that is not any more healthy. Okay. So the effects of an internet addiction. Okay, an internet addiction can have many harmful effects on a person, both physically and emotionally, and mentally. Okay, body aches. You know, don't nagagaling yun mga sakit sa katawan, sa, your back problems, your hip problems, carpal tunnel syndrome, insomnia, vision problems, and weight gain or loss are just some of the physical problems one may suffer as a result of internet addiction. Gusto ko sabihin, check, check, check ako sa maraming things, pero hello, bago pa to nagkaroon ng pandemic at parang gusto ng sedentary life, gano'n na talaga ako. My, my sleeping pattern has always been really three to four hours, okay? Pero yun, totoo naman, uh, the sedentary life na, na doubled with the uh, internet addiction could prove fatal, okay? Because, you know, their physical disabilities, they lang dumadating, ano nangyayari. Sabihin ko na, kanyari, of course, you know, my, my having had a knee surgery, hindi naman sa internet addiction, is because I have to work sitting down all day. But it's my fault we're not walking away or exercising in between. Kasi po, truth be told, now when you are engrossed in what you're doing, when you're, especially when it's work, hindi ko na naiisip po yung tumayo at maglakad-lakad. Kasi, dinadaretso yung trabaho. 
yun na nga po ang nangyari dyan, right? So, emotional effects may include uh, depression, dishonesty, anxiety, social isolation, aggression, at mga mood swings. Ayan po. Ayan po ang mga effect ng internet addiction. And, what about internet addiction at saka mental illness? Meron po. Meron po. There is a connection. Right? A 2016 research study found that those who were deemed as having an internet addiction using Dr. Young's internet addiction test had significantly more trouble dealing with their day-to-day -day activities. Okay? So, yung mga na parang na-diagnose, so to speak, well, kasi nag-conduct ng test si Dr. Yang ng Addiction Center sa Amerika. So, yung mga who were deemed as having an internet addiction had significantly more trouble dealing with their day-to-day -day activities, which included life at home, work, school-related duties, and their ability to socialize in the real world. See? Kahit na yung mga temporary kasiyahan nila na may kachat, na hindi ka kilala, or just being a different persona altogether, may balik po yun because it, dis it detaches you from the reality of life. Excuse me. There is still a debate over whether a computer, cell phone, or online addiction is the cost Diba? Or consequence, consequence of certain mental health issues. ADHD symptoms, check, such as difficulty planning ahead. Ah, hindi naman. Gano po, planner ako talaga ahead eh. Poor time management, okay, yan. and higher than average levels of attentional impulsivity are also common among those with an internet addiction. Oh, yun yung, ito po yung mga symptoms sa ADHD symptoms. Difficulty planning ahead, poor time management, and higher than average levels of attention, attentional impulsivity, are also common among those with an internet addiction. Additionally, those with an addiction are more likely to have a co-occurring disorder that requires special care and treatment. Ina nga, may akibat, may kaakibat na really, really diagnosed uh, mental problem. Okay? So, how do you treat an internet addiction? Okay, mapinta na tayo dyan sa subject na yan. Like, that was said, no? Tinatest pa po talaga, as we speak, kung yung kung pwede itong gawing i-diagnose as a disorder. There is no one specific treatment that should be used to address an internet addiction. Depending on the severity of the addiction and the behavior of the individual, different types of treatment would be effective, okay? If someone you know is suffering from excessive internet abuse, the first step niyo, ang una-una niyo pong dapat gawin, ay planuhin ang intervention. Planuhin yung kung paano ito buksain. Planuhin kung paano niyo, how to go, at anong atake ang gagawin niyo to deal with it, okay? So, lagay niyo ba sa rehab to, or see a psychiatrist, or, you know, or those things have to be planned, okay? To express your concerns, okay? Therapy is generally incorporated into the treatment of addiction along with co-occurring disorders that may be present, such as anxiety, depression, and or obsessive compulsive disorder, yung OCD, okay? In some cases, medication uh, may be used, okay? Pwede pa hong pagalingin ng medicina. Uh, uh, you know, in some cases po, yun na nga, yung medicine pwede pang umapekto and may be used to manage symptoms of these underlying mental illnesses or to control intrusive thoughts about going online if other treatment options were not effective. Yun na nga, para meron naman pong mga treatment pang tulong dyan. Internet addiction does not need to control the life of yourself or of someone you love. Consider doing more research to determine what the right way forward may be, but also be mindful of not waiting too long before taking action to fix the problem. Dapat natin isipin, time is a valuable thing, and perhaps the most sacrifice over much, uh, the best sacrifice 
over much so as is, is to let go of the technological tools okay na nag na, na nagko-cause niyan ah uh, i let go niyo muna tingnan niyo muna kung pwede kayong mag mag cellphone or mag mag computer or mag tablet for a while para i-detox niyo sa dito niyo okay if you've decided to take that next step contact a therapist today okay and learn about what treatment options may be done okay to address this uh, internet addiction to overcome internet addiction okay you, you should you can get support from uh, you know from able therapists sa Makati Med meron po diyan psychology psychiatrist but then seek a specialist kung malala na po talaga okay so con- but first consider doing more research to determine which right way or path you want to take and handle in dealing with this internet addiction okay all right so moving right along okay uh na naman tayo current uh, news of course when we talk about uh covid-19 or yung second booster required before bivalent vaccine ano ibig sabihin diba the Department of Health shall ha- uh, still has no guidelines on a vaccination program using the bivalent vaccine, including informing the public that a second booster is required before getting jabbed a fifth time. Itong sinabi ni Iloilo Representative Janet Garin. So, ibig sabihin, may kapag pwedeng magpabakuna ng panglima, okay? o yung gamit ay yung bivalent vaccine yung panglahat pangkalahatan kung hindi ka pa daw nakakompleto ng vaccination a second generation covid-19 vaccine uh, are expected okay second generation covid-19 vaccines are expected to arrive in the country next month garin has asked the doh to come up with guidelines on how the jabs are to be implemented okay she claimed the agency has also not highlighted in its information drive that the second booster is prerequisite to getting the bivalent shot. O yun pala daw. Kailangan bago ka bigyan itong uh, bivalent vaccine. Bivalent means yung pangkalahat. It, hindi lang isang strain ang, um, ang ina-address. Ay dapat daw nakapag-set ng booster shot ka na. O, malaking bagay yan to know, right? Really, malaking bagay yan to know because hindi lahat ay nakapag-second booster shot na, right? Iba hanggang isa lang. So, we have to emphasize to the public that they will not be eligible for bivalent vaccine if they had not taken the second booster. The public should be aware of that so that they can start preparing. So, sinabi po ni Garin, who used to be the health secretary, okay? The DOH announced earlier that bivalent vaccine would be available in the Philippines before the end of the year. Eh, ano na tayo po, end of the year. So, baka nandiyan na yung vaccine as we speak, okay? So, an- ako pwede na kasi double boosted na po ako, right? Unlike the, the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine manufactured earlier, the bivalent jab provides protection against the Omicron variant from which various m- mutations of the virus have started, okay? The Omicron variant is not as deadly as the Delta variant, but is more transmissible, it's highly transmissible. Actually, because nga, di ba, yan ang kumakalat sa Asia pa rin at sa Amerika, sa Europe, lalo na sa Japan, sobrang daming infections, lahat na bata matanda. Pero, in-open nilang tourism, right? Kasi nga, yung death rate mababa at hindi masyado serious yung mga symptoms ng tao. So, kiber, okay na, buksan natin ang tourism kasi the economy is dying, right? So, people are traveling everywhere, okay? Karin pointed out that the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, and the Health and the health technology the health technology assessment council should also prepare for the entry of bivalent vaccine otherwise she cautioned the uptake of bivalent jo- uh, not jo- the, the uptake of bivalent jabs may be low and will only result in vaccine wastage see so masasayang lang po talaga dahil hindi kayo pwedeng the injection ng fifth booster or yung bivalent vaccine kung hindi kayo nakapag-second booster shot, okay? She noted that as a practice, the DOH comes up with the guidelines that need HTAC approval, 
thus necessitating the need for the two agencies to start working together at the same time, okay? It is the role of the FBA to grant permits or licenses before a product can be made available in the country, okay? In my opinion, the uptake of booster shots was low because nung gusto na ng mga taong magpa-booster shot, they were turned away. So if there are stocks of vaccines and they are safe, we should give them already. Huwag nang ipunin, di ba? Anong nangyari? Nasiraan lang ng vaccine, di ba? Otherwise, they will lose interest to be vaccinated, sabi to ni Janet Marin. She also said that by this time, there should be already guidelines on who are eligible to receive which vaccine and who should administer the shots, di ba? Kasi kasi huli-huli, di ba? Hindi po inorganize para sabihin ng ito ang mga pwedeng i-vaccine o i-booster ng pangalawa o pangatlo, okay? Okay? The basic question is, are we prepared for the bivalent vaccine? If the vaccine arrives in December, are we ready to implement and roll it out? Garin maintained that the public should be informed that a second booster shot as a prerequisite to getting the bivalent jab. This requirement should trigger those interested to get a second booster. Well, the Department of Health data showed 73 million 707,875 individuals were fully vaccinated as of November 21. Of that number, 20.86 million have received their first and second boosters. So, hindi naman malaking kwanti pa lang ang naka first and second booster. In the meantime, there are 1,326 new COVID cases in the country. Uh, bringing up to 4,033,682, the total number of the highly infectious disease in the country. The department noted that of the total number of confirmed COVID cases, 18,482 are active, while 3,950 have recovered from the illness. The number of those who died to the infection rose to 64,594. The National Capital Region posted the most number of new cases in the last 14 days, with 3,874 followed by Calabarzon with 19, 1,961, and Western Visayas with 1,293. Okay? Ang ano naman po, hospitalization or hospital bed occupancy rate is now 23.4%, while the cumulative positivity rate is at 13.8. So, good news pa rin po. Uh, good news pa rin po. Excuse me. Pasensya na po at ako ay nag-yon. <laughs> Alright. So, mapunta naman po tayo. Connectado pa rin po sa COVID po. Kung nag nagwawala ang mga taga-China. Because, di ba po, in China, they have this zero COVID policy na pinaparusahan yung mga taong bayan nila. Nakamaskara pa rin. Pagpupunta ka, sasakay ka daw ng grab or ng taxi. Kailangan ka pa mag-PCR test, ano ba yan, or antigen, whatever. Binibigay naman daw, subsidized daw ng government. Pero oh my God, the people are like prisoners, right? They're locked down perennially and they can't do much. They have to wear masks at all kasi zero, zero COVID policy. So let's look at what we're talking about here. Ito po. Ayan o. Oh. Oh, sorry. Bila ko na ito. What was I saying? Yan po, sa London po, the BBC said yesterday, Sunday, one of its journalists in China had been arrested and beaten by police while covering protests against the country's zero COVID policy. Hala kayo, British yung binugbog niyo. Hello. Hundreds of people took to the streets in China's major cities on Sunday in a rate outpouring of the public anger against the state. Okay. Uh, the BBC extremely concerned about the treatment of our journalist, Ed Lawrence, who was arrested and handcuffed while covering the protests in Shanghai. Ito pa yung 
mga nagpaprotesta yung mga tao sa China regarding this zero COVID policy na pinaparang panaparasahan may mga tao na dalawa sa tatlong taon silang nakamaskara and kailangan ng PCR test araw-araw kung aalis ka ng bahay, right? It, do you think there will ever be zero COVID in the world? Well, kung ba yan parang magiging endemic or then magiging parang flu na may panapanahon? Okay, Lawrence working in the country as an accredited journalist was detained for several hours during which time he was beaten and kicked by police according to the BBC. Gago pala itong mga ito eh. Diba? Yung journalist na foreign na bumbugan niyo ba? It is very worrying that one of our journalists was attacked in this way while carrying out his duty. The statement said, We have had no official explanation or apology from the Chinese authority. Beyond a claim by the officials who later released him that they had arrested him for his own good in case he caught COVID from the crowd. We do not consider this a credible explanation. Talaga naman, kalukuhan ito ah. Kausap niya ito ah. Alright. So yan, okay? It is the role of the FDA to grant permits, okay? Yan po, di si yung, yan po, no? Uh, yung mga journalists po talaga kasi, especially those who go uh, undercover and those who cover events, news, especially in current events, they, they are, you know, we are in the risk. There is danger and risk in that kind of job. Ako po ako ay broadcast journalist. Ako po ay uh, media PR analyst. Okay? And my job also, I get to cover things. I've had that kind of life when I was uh, a tech journalist for Manila Bulletin. I, I have traveled a lot of countries because of it. Pero yun na nga, yung iba yung reporting, news reporting na kailangan kung pumunta kung may gera, di ba, para i-cover, yun po, may danger. Although, meron din po kaming danger kung ikaw ang sort of media na lagi kang nagbabate o lagi kang nag, nag kung kinakall out mo yung mga masasamang tao, yun, meron din risk kagaya ng nangyari kay Percy Lapid, di ba? Sinilence po siya. Kung sino man yun, uh, tinitira niya. And ayun, naging silence of the lambs. Ito siya nang ginagawa nila sa mga journalists na pinitira sila or just stating the facts about them, right? Because it's a cruel world where some, a lot of bad people still thrive. Yan po yung nangyayari. Murder, di ba? So, balik tayo dito kay Lawrence, okay? The uh, journalist Ed Lawrence, okay? Lawrence, working in the country as an accredited journalist, was detained for several hours, during which time, he has beaten, he was beaten and kicked by the police, okay? So, it is very worrying, diba? That uh, one of the journalists were, was attacked this way. Wala pa daw apology from China. Well, they expect ayaw nga nila i-acknowledge yung Donatang show nila, right? Okay? So, going back to the Okay, patong patong na hota si. Okay, in connection to that, de ba? Ay yung mga Shanghai protesters, because yung buhay ng mga taga China parang napaka abnormal pa rin this pandemic, you know, because they've been yeah, no, Shanghai protesters pa dito. May mga parang sawang-sawa na lang ang sana kasi sa buhay na nakamaskara. Okay, pagpalit naman na tinuman niya. Oops. Okay. 
Yung yan ay House Husband Story. Anyway, ayan. Shhh, protesters. Police jostle as anger over China's COVID curves mount. Ayan. Okay, uh, all right, ayan. Mm -hmm. Ayan o, ay, asan ba yung picture ba? There you go, all right? In connection nga to the, uh, the restrictions ng COVID, hundreds of demonstrators in Shanghai shouted and jostled with police yesterday evening, Sunday, as protests over China's stringent COVID restrictions flared for a third day following a deadly factory fire in the country's far west. The wave of civil disobedience, which has spread to other cities, including Beijing, is, unpre is unprecedented in mainland China since President Xi Jinping assumed power a decade ago and comes amid mounting frustration over his signature zero COVID policy. Okay? China has spent nearly three years living with some of the strictest COVID curbs in the world. The fire in the city of uh, Orumki triggered protests after videos of the incident posted on social media led to accusation that lockdown was a factor in the death toll. Ayun ang sinasabi nila, sa kaka-lockdown ng mga na daw na nagkasulog dahil dyan sa mga COVID restrictions daw. Orumki officials abruptly held a news conference in the early hours of Saturday to deny, to deny COVID measures had hampered escape and rescue. Many of Orumki's 4 million residents have been under some of the country's longest lockdowns, barred from leaving their homes for as long as 100 days. Bawal talaga po silang dumabas ng bahay. Para mga prisoner, di ba? On Sunday in Shanghai, police kept a heavy presence on Bulumki, Bulum, Bulumuki Road, Bulumuki Road, which is named after Urumki, and where a, a candlelight vigil the day before turned into protests. By evening, hundreds of people gathered in the area. Some jostled with police trying to disperse them. People held up blank sheets of paper as an expression of protest. Okay? So, yan po nangyayari. Okay? Okay. Okay, all right. So now, oops, So I thought, so yun po, nag uproar yung mga taga China, right? Uh, Kita mo yung naman dyan. So, nag-rally sila, nag, 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 nagkakaroon na ng political unrest or public unrest. Okay? We just want our basic human rights. We can't leave our homes without getting a test. Totoo yun po. Bawal pumunta, bawal sumakay ng taxi, bawal sumakay ng public transport nang hindi ka mag-PCR. Grape, libre na nga yung mga test, pero siyempre napaka-inconvenient para sa lahat. Sana test lahat, social contact tracing, whatever, pag umas ka ng bahay, Parang sunusundan ka, kailangan magpa-PCR test ka. Okay? Uh, the people here aren't violent, but the police are arresting them for no reason. They tried to grab me, but the people around me grabbed my arm so hard and pulled me back so I could escape. Itong sinabi ng isang uh, unidentified uh, protester. Okay? Another protester, Sean Xiao, said, I'm here because 
I love my country, but I don't love my government. I want to be able to go out freely, but I can't go out. Our COVID-19 policy is a game, and, and it's not based on science or reality. No, last Saturday, put the vigil in Shanghai for victims of the factory fire turned into a protest against COVID curbs, with the crowd chanting calls for lockdowns to be lifted. One large group chanted, down with the Chinese Communist Party, down with Xi Jinping. According to witnesses and videos posted on social media in a rare public protest against the country's leadership. Ang Urumqi, Beijing at Wuhan. On Sunday at Beijing's prestigious Tsinghua University, dozens of people held a peaceful protest against COVID restrictions, during which they sang the national anthem, according to images and videos posted on social media. One student who saw the Sing Chua protest described to Reuters feeling taken aback by the protest at one of China's most elite universities and she alma mater. Ayan pala alma mater ng presidente. Uh, okay. Uh, ah. The prime minister ba sila o presidente? I forget. Okay. People there were very passionate. The sight of it was impressive. The student said declining to be named given the sensitivity of the matter. In the central city of Wuhan, naman, kung saan ang galing ang COVID, where the pandemic began three years ago, hundreds of residents took the streets on Sunday, smashing through metal barricades, overturning COVID testing tents, and demanding an end to lockdowns, according to videos on social media that could not be independently verified. Thursday's fire that killed 10 people in a high-rise building in Urumqi, capital of the Xinjiang region, saw crowds there to take to the street on Friday, evening chatting end the lockdown and pumping their fists in the air according to unverified videos on social media. China has struck with its zero COVID policy even as much of the world has lifted most restrictions. While, while low by global standards, China's cases have hit record highs for days with nearly 14,000 new infections on Saturday. China defends the policy as life-saving and necessary to prevent overwhelming the healthcare system. Officials have vowed to continue with it despite the growing public pushback and mounting economic toll. China's economy suffered a broad slowdown in October as factory output grew more slowly than expected. Alam niyo naman ang maraming pabrika dyan sa China. And retail sales fell for the first time in five months, underscoring faltering demand at home and abroad. Okay, uh, Adding to a raft of weak data in recent days, China reported on Sunday that industrial firms saw overall profits fall further in the January-October period with 22 of China's 41 major industrial sectors showing a decline. The world's second largest economy is also facing other headwinds, including global recession risks and a property downturn. Okay, so I can no? Okay, so Yan po ang tungkol dyan sa China at yung kaguluhan na nangyayari dyan. Alright? Alright. So now, okay, tapos na po tayo pang usapan yung tungkol sa internet addictions. Uh, I mean, hindi pala. Tutuloy po natin yun at i-address one by one, bukas na lang. Okay? Kasi it's a it's, it's, uh, one whole ano, episode just to devote to that. Right? Okay, let's go naman to technology and lifestyle. It's, uh, I feel well, today it feels like summer, so it's 31 degrees, but it shouldn't be that hot. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about. Um, let me see my. Okay. 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 Ayan. Ito. 
ang GCash for, di ba? We talk about cybersecurity and all the time, all the time. Okay. Ang GCash po, meron double authentication and it's drive to fight against cyber crimes and, and um, what do you call this? Um, identity theft and all those things, right? Meron pong uh, ginawa ang may mali. No, sorry. Ayan. I just move it here. Okay? So there you go. Gcash double authentication. Ano po ito? What is that? Let's talk about that. Okay? Because, ayan eh. Protection. Hold on. Where is it? Where's my Gcash? What happened? Oh, yeah. Gcash, okay. Globe, Gcash. Leading finance app, Gcash, okay, which is actually talagang ang lakas ngayon, maraming news. It's set to launch, okay, uh, the double authentication feature. Ano yun? This new security feature aims to prevent unauthorized transactions brought about by phishing and other types of scams. Ayan po, crime about cyber crimes okay the feature ensures that only the account owner has the ability to link his gcash account to a specific device eh, talaga namang dapat ganun, di ba? according to wensley bangit chief customer officer of gcash the new feature will provide a unique identifier that can't be fished by scammers talaga naka invento ng ganun. it will also provide an additional layer of security to the current sms otp Okay. Uh, Gcash uh, continues to beef up its security measures. It has also been ramping up its partnership with authorities and re regulators to help ensure the whole e-wallet ecosystem is safe for all. Diba, siguro, halos lahat ng tao meron Gcash, no? Kasi it's a form of uh, e-wallet. Ayan ang katawag na e-wallet, electronic wallet. Sa China nga po, panay ganyan na eh. Ang tawag nila WeChat. They use WeChat for most everything. Bayad ng bills, book ng mga hotel, to travel, uh, pambayad sa grocery, lahat. Hindi na nga nagagamit ng pera doon, ng cash. Okay? So anyway, going back to what I was saying, no? Uh, si Gcash has been ramping up uh, its partnership with authorities, tsaka regulators, to help ensure the whole economic uh, e-wallet ecosystem is safe. Recently, during the G-Safe Tayo media launch, Gcash signed a memorandum of agreement with the Philippine National Police Anti-Cyber Crime Group. Meron po. Yes, there is such a thing. Di ba, na-report ko na po yan two years ago na meron tayong uh, cyber crime group, cyber crime reporting, at saka na, na may liabilities na ang mga cyber crime. Meron pang tinitignan na jail time yan, okay? So, so Gcash forged an agreement with the Philippine National Police Anti-Cyber Crime Group or the PNPACG. The government, I mean, the, the agreement the agreement strengthens collaboration in going after perpetrators involved in phishing, smishing, online fraud, e-scams, vishing, and other cyber crimes that take advantage of Gcash users. Para sa mga nakong na confused as fishing on fishing, wishing, whatever, fishing. We will deal with that tomorrow. Isa isa natin ulit yung mga cyber crime yan, ano yan, fishing. Hindi po yan pangingisda, okay? In a way, yung nakakatawa mga related sa pang isa, clickbait naman yung isa. Pag binibait yung click mo, clicks mo. Fishing is pag uh, in a information mo. Basta, we'll talk about that more tomorrow, okay? I would like to express my confidence that through our stronger partnership with the PNPACG, we will be able to achieve more in the prevention, investigation, and prosecution of cyber crimes. Ito pong sinabi ng taga GCAS. GCAS also assures the PNPACG that we will do whatever we can in order to successfully implement our agreement. Sinabi ito ni GCAS Chief Legal Officer Attorney Maricar 
Alvarez Adriano. At kung matatandaan nyo, nangyari po yan sa Congress, di ba po, ng election, na all of a sudden, yung mga congressista or even the senators were receiving texts from unknown sources using their names and calling out their personal names. At para nila nakuha yung mga phone number na yun. Kaya, not necessarily Gcash Globe, Smart, and all those <coughs> providers. <coughs> Please, di ba? Itighten nyo daw yung security nyo kung paano nakukuha, di ba? Yung mga phone number na yun. Na cellphone, na? Na personal ng mga senator. Si Dubili, si Binay, na, na biktima, si Jingoy, si JV, okay? Also, during the above-mentioned event, uh, <coughs> Gcash has introduced a new product under its Ginsure platform, Online Shopping Protect. And to point sa bihan, for just 34 pesos per month, Gcash, uh, Gcash users, okay, uh, get up to 20,000 in, in insurance coverage for incomplete deliveries, defective items, accidentally damaged or stolen products. This offering will launch soon on Ginsure. I have insurance, Ginsure, powered by global insurance company Chubb. All right. Okay. On that note, okay, we only have uh, nine more minutes. Upisan ko lang yung tungkol sa papag-usapan tomorrow. Sige, we will talk about, you know, when we deal with all these stresses, this internet addiction, the stresses of life per se, you know, <clears throat> how do we have a balance of our mind, body, and heart? Okay? Tomorrow, okay, I'm ko lang tong, to double authentication, all right? Tomorrow, we'll talk about this. Oops. Sorry. All right. We'll talk about this more, okay? How strong mind, body, and heart. How to achieve a balance, happiness, and satisfaction in your life. Balancing our mind, body, and our heart. Lucas po yan, okay? Usapan natin yan, Lifestyle Tuesdays, okay? On Tuesdays are Lifestyle Tuesdays. Monday are current, current techies, current tech Mondays, lifestyle Tuesdays, workaholic Wednesday, workaholic Wednesdays, and uh, on Thursdays are or our continuation, and Fridays are free for all. Okay, so. Uh, after this, or after I, you know, ako mag attend po ako ng launching, like I said, okay? I will attend the launch. But uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching today. And as I, uh, if uh, there's, um, for those who will miss episodes po ng aming mga current episodes, please feel free to go visit our YouTube channel the Broadstream Cast Communicators YouTube channel, and please like and subscribe. Doon po, pwede nyo panoorin yung mga na-miss yung episodes namin at balikan, excuse me, yung mga issues, you know, involving, in my case, technology and how, you know, di ba? Kasi po, ang aking pong programa is Buhay Online, which means to say, uh, I talk about how technology uh, helps our day, uh, us in our daily lives, whether it's home, work, play, uh, studying, in all aspects. Why do I say the news from time to time? Because technology makes it possible for us to know what's happening around us as it happens and when it happens. Thank God for technology, right? So, at the same time po, uh, in the address din po natin yung mga current events, like, of course, are, are the status of technologies that are being used to to control COVID. That's why they talk about COVID. And of course, in the educational side, how what's happening, lalo na sa pandemic nito, na nag-face-to-face ng mga tao, diba? So, all of those things is life, diba? All of those issues that deal with, that, that happen in our lives, that involves technology, which is nowadays, most of our lives revolve or use technology. But like I always say, 
meron yang caveat or something to watch out for. Technology, which involves the internet, can be a dangerous place for people that use it for bad gain. Diba? Tsaka yun na nga, yung internet addiction. Nangyayari yan. Yung internet addiction, hindi mo naman niya masisisi doon sa internet. Masisisi mo yung tao. Because siya yung na-addict. Pero, with the advent of technology nga, yan ang nangyari. Uh, I, I really, I firmly believe that this is now, the times nowadays, this day and age, is a more stressful time than when I was younger, than when our parents were younger, when life was simpler then. Sure, we have all the conveniences of technology. But, diba, don't you dream of a world that's not as stressed as now? Na, pag inisip ko, when I recall, mas, mas masaya yung life noon, mas carefree kung tignan, because you don't have to bother so much about knowing, yun na nga, yung news as it happens. Hindi mo masyado nalalaman yung mga evils of the world, or yung mga ibang, lalo na kung basa ka. And nowadays, the kids, too much information. They have access to so much that really affects them a lot, right? Mentally, emotionally, physically. We have to admit that. That what our children ingest daily, online. Yung magulang ka, kung bata pa anak mo, ikaw nasa sayo yun talaga na control mo. Pero, yun na nga, pag malaki na yung anak mo, yun nga, pag, nag, pag alam na talaga niya mag-computer and all that, they themselves will find their way to all this information and technology. That's why we have to watch out all the time. We have to be mindful of the ill effects of such a freedom of using, of, of information, of getting information and using technology to facilitate things is, you no, know, the dangers of that. Marami po. Diba? Kaya nga po yung mga, diba? Yung mga terrorists, yung mga crooks, yung mga criminals, anong ginagawa? Nagpapagaling lalo sila sa technology. Kinukuha nila yung mga magagaling na para gumawa ng apps. Bad things. And also, yung, yung mga mga sexual perverts dyan, ng mga predators online. So, all these things we have to watch out for and be careful with. We have to be careful and mindful of how we use technology in our lives. Like I say, you have to make sure that technology works for you and not against you. Whatever ko na yung sinasabi, even as far back as my uh, Manila Bulletin days. I miss uh, writing for a real newspaper as in, the ba? But nowadays, the ba? Everything's virtual. Everything's digital. But ako, I rather miss going back to basics. I rather miss the simpler life I had growing up as a child, playing piko or piko ba yan? Or, or tumbang press in the calle, right? Or play, playing tag with my friends or, you know, having pajama parties. It was, a, it was a less stressful time, if I can imagine. And, you know, your mommy and daddy, natin, you know, they're the ones working, and, and all we have to do is be diligent, good students, right? But, of course, I was a mischievous child. I still am, I think. But, you know, nakakamis po yung simpler life. Devoid of the gadgets. Devoid of the internet. Although, sasabihin natin, kung nangyayari yung pandemic, tas walang internet, nakakaloka. Totoo. Pero nangyari na naman noon yung mga ganun, pero people still dealt with it. They, they relied on their instincts and abilities. Yan po ang nagkukulang ngayon sa atin sa paggamit ng teknolohiya. Eh. Parang yung mental manual ability natin na nabawasan, dahil tamad na tayo, lahat everything ay i-google. Lahat everything i-calculate sa, sa phone. You know, we have to uh, know that those inherent uh, human you know, mental in, uh, processes are still in place. Huwag niyong hayaang yung technology, technology lang ang mag-order pang sa inyo. Thank you so much for joining me today here in Buhay Online on our Monday 
Magkita-kita po tayo ulit. Tomorrow, marami